Silly Little Beaver Children's Books Read Aloud! Bust my boilers! Hey there, I'm Thomas. I really hope you like my book. Please leave a comment with your thoughts and subscribe too! Here we go! Boop, boop. Thomas and Friends, The Monster Under the Shed. Based on the Railway Series by the Reverend W. Audrey. Illustrated by Richard Courtney. It was a dark, blustery evening at the station. Sir Topham Hatt had closed the railway early on account of the weather. The engines were waiting for the signal to return to their sheds. Maybe one of us should tell a story to pass the time, Thomas suggested. The other engines looked pleased with Thomas's idea. I have the perfect story for tonight, James volunteered with a sly grin. A long time ago, James began, there was a brave Blue Engine who was always eager to help. Blue Engine, the station master asked one night, would you go to the end of the tracks to pick up a coach that was left behind? Of course, the brave, eager Engine replied, and he set out into the dark, foggy night. By the time the little Blue Engine reached the end of the tracks, the fog was so thick, he could hardly see anything. I'll just have to wait until morning, said the engine to himself, and he settled into an old shed for the night. Late that night, the little blue engine awoke to a noise coming from below the shed. Creak! He opened his eyes and saw long fingers reaching for him through the floorboards. There was a monster under the shed. Terrified, the little blue engine raced out of the shed with the horrible engine-eating monster chasing him through the fog. Th then what happened? Percy asked timidly. That's where the story ends, said James. No one ever heard from that little blue engine again. What about the monster? Percy whispered. Don't be silly, Percy, Gordon said with a chuckle. It's just a story. What if that story is true? Percy asked Thomas on the way to the sheds. What if the engine eating monster is out there somewhere right now? Stop being such a scaredy cat, Percy, Thomas answered. There are no such things as monsters. Later that night, after they had settled in for bed, the engines were startled by a terrible racket coming from Percy's shed. Gordon, Thomas, help! There's a monster in my shed, wailed Percy. Suddenly, James appeared roaring with laughter. He had been rattling some scrap metal behind the sheds to frighten Percy. I'm a monster, I'm a monster, James shouted. Percy was embarrassed for making such a fuss. It's okay, Percy, said Henry. Sometimes good imaginations think bad thoughts. Later that night, Thomas woke with a fright. He heard a strange noise. Scratch, scratch, stop it, James, Thomas yelled. But James was sound asleep. Scratch, scratch, if it's not James, then maybe I really do have a monster under my shed, thought Thomas, and he stayed awake all night just to be safe. Thomas was awfully tired when he met Percy on the docks the next morning. Did you hear any other strange noises in your shed last night? Thomas asked. Not after James' silly prank, Percy replied. Now Thomas felt silly himself for staying awake all night. By the middle of the day, Thomas was very sleepy and running far behind schedule. Henry pulled up beside him. You look as if you could use some special coal, said Henry. Oh, I'm just a little tired, Thomas answered. He didn't want anyone to know that he'd been too frightened to sleep. 
Just then, James sped by on the express track. What's the matter, Thomas? He called. Monsters keeping you up at night? And James disappeared down the track, laughing loudly. By the end of the day, Thomas barely had enough steam to make it back to the yard. The other engines were telling stories again, but Thomas headed straight to bed. Sometime that night, Thomas woke with a fright. Scratch, scratch. The noises were back, and they were definitely coming from under the shed. Who's there? Thomas whispered into the dark. Creak, creak, came the answer. Go away, monster. Get out, Thomas ordered as he closed his eyes tight. Thump, 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 thump. The noise was getting louder and closer. That will surely wake the other engines, Thomas said to himself. They'll save me from the monster. But the other engines didn't stir. Thump, thump. It's just outside the door, Thomas yelped. There's its head. Help, Gordon, Thomas whispered. But only the monster heard him. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Then the doors of Thomas's shed began to rattle on their hinges. Bang, 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 bang. It's trying to get in, thought Thomas. Then suddenly, the banging stopped. Thomas was too frightened to move. He peered out into the darkness, and there it was. The horrible engine-eating monster. Thomas could see its eyes glowing in the night. Thomas clamped his own eyes shut and screamed, Gordon, Henry, Percy, James, he cried. Save me from the monster. Thomas, Gordon said laughing, open your eyes. What are you laughing at, Gordon, snapped Thomas. There's a monster right outside my shed. Not anymore, Thomas, Gordon replied. Now the monster is inside your shed. Thomas opened one eye very slowly. A hedgehog? Thomas yelled in surprise. I was afraid of a tiny little hedgehog? Now the engines all laughed, and Thomas laughed with them. Percy has a good imagination, Thomas, but I think yours is even better, said Gordon with a little chuckle. <laughs> I think you're right, agreed Thomas. It's the only thing in the world that I could turn a tiny hedgehog into a big, scary monster. The end. Thank you so much for going on that adventure with me. Please be sure to comment with your thoughts and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> I'm going to find something to eat now. Bye-bye. <laughs>